We want to bring in U.S. energy industry veteran Stephen Shulk, he's the principal of the Shulk Group, the industry's foremost provider of price range forecasting and analysis. So bring us your best guesses because January has been an amazing time for oil prices. Is that inflationary pressure set to stay, Stephen? Uh, excuse me, absolutely. And it wasn't just January. Oil and all commodities, for instance, have had a uh, had a terrific 2021. And certainly 2022 is getting off to a, a great start. It all comes down with oil down to scarcity. Uh, we're now reaping what we sowed over the past few years. We have to keep in mind that Wall Street and governments in the West have pressured oil and gas producers to shift capex in order to quote unquote decarbonize and move away from fossil fuel production. So therefore, as those dollars dry up to bring more infrastructure, more BTUs from fossil fuels to the market, we're looking at continued scarcity. And this is certainly where uh, the market is pricing in in the futures market. You add to that Russia and OPEC, they're playing it cautiously. They have added more than half of the production they took off post pandemic, but they're in no hurry to bring back full production. And again, who can blame them? We still have a lot of known unknowns with the future impact of demand from from that Greek alphabet soup of variants of, uh, of, of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So that said, there's still a great unknown from a yeah, probabilistic. Yes. Stephen, is it odd, though, that the unknown doesn't seem that unknown to OPEC Plus? I mean, they've been talking very much about potentially demand being resolute despite Omicron. Why that sort of certainty? Well, absolutely. There, there, there is that uncertainty. And we have to keep in mind whether it is an OPEC producer or if it's a North American producer, they've seen this movie before. They went in whole hog uh, at the Shell Gale 10 years ago, and they increased their anchorage, they increased their debt loads. And then when prices crashed in 2014, they were left, and more importantly, their bankers were left holding the bag for the North American producer. Same thing happened in COVID. We had a tremendous increase in acreage, a tremendous in increase in getting uh, bar um steel into the ground to get those barrels out and then when things crashed once again so whether we're talking about the north american producer because keep in mind pre-covid united states was the number one producer of crude oil at over 13 million barrels a day mm. we're now 1.5 million barrels a day below that level and there is no increase because now the mantra is clean up your balance right. sheets clean up your debt and decarbonize and Stephen, that brings up a good point to the supply side that is 88 dollars $90 a barrel not tempting enough because we know how efficient these companies have gotten, how financially disciplined these companies have gotten, and the break-evens are so low. When does this start to get tempting? Yeah, that's a good point. We have to look for a signal from Wall Street because right now the Wall Street uh, signal is they want free cash flow and they want, yes, we are seeing a greater productivity uh, with the producer, but keep in mind, we're seeing inflation across the board. It's not just crude oil. Last year, gasoline, well, just uh, as an aside, gasoline, there are about 20, 22 different petrochemicals that go into gasoline in addition to crude oil. Butane, a key ingredient for winter grade gasoline, those prices last year increased 50 percent. Ethanol prices are up more than 100 percent. Natural gasoline prices are up more than 40 percent. Mm. And then steel pipe. If we want to keep on drilling, building pipelines, steel pipe prices increased 45 percent last year. So yes, your, your producer is more, is more productive. And we've seen these productivity gains month in, month out. But the cost to get those barrels to the ground continue to rise. And right now, they are outstripping the market's ability to get those BTUs to uh, to the consumer. Just quickly here, pivot to nat gas. Caroline Hyde does this much better than I do when we think about the European nat gas market, the struggles that have happened over there. How are you thinking about the impacts of European, even some of the Russian uh, geopolitical tensions that are going on, and, and then, of course, the supply outlook for nat gas? Right, of course. Now, uh, that's that's a, a scary show that's coming to a to United States within the next two years. The governments in Europe made a decision two Januarys ago to double, well, to increase the price of carbon, and they did. Carbon prices doubled. That pushed uh, energy users out of coal, then into natural gas. Natural gas prices rallied at the end of the last year to the equivalent of $300 oil. That, in turn, pushed 
gas users into oil derivative products. So it's been this knock-on effect. So the problem in Europe is you came off of a cold winter last winter, supplies were low, you doubled the cost of carbon, you pushed more demand into natural gas, mm -hmm. and now we have, of course, the situation with Nord Stream, Russia, the Ukraine, sanctions, dot, 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 dot. So now it's continued growth, a huge question mark on supply, and prices Stephen, have been rocking higher. Very quickly, price end of the year for oil, for gas? Uh, by June, 30% probability uh, in oil that will be above $100 a barrel. We are a little lofty now. Yeah. I would expect to see a pullback. We're going into the weakest demand part of the season as refiners retool. But as demand begins to pick up spring and into summer, again, 30% probability we will be over $100 a barrel here in the U.S.